let's get this party started, eh, Ray? Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce Ray, who's primarily supervised by about gender, uh, and I'm the secondary supervisor. Um, and he will be speaking to you today about his ideas for how mindfulness can help in the management and prevention of pain and injury. All right. Okay. Uh, thanks, Joseph. Um, so my name is Ray, uh, Ray Chen, and I'll be presenting my uh, COC today on the online mindfulness-based intervention for musculoskeletal pain management and prevention of injury. Um, so before I start, I'd just like to thank my supervisors, like Baljinda and Joseph, um, for their ongoing support and guidance throughout this whole process, because without them, I definitely, definitely wouldn't be in this position today. Um, so thank you to them. Okay, so I just want to give a little bit of background about myself before I begin. So my background is as a musculoskeletal and sports physiotherapist. And my interest in psychology started as a physio. So in particular, I was interested in the psychology of pain. Um, and my journey into mindfulness didn't start until I had a significant injury that stopped me from practicing as a physio. And it's kind of led me to into this world of psychology and mindfulness and um, into this position that I'm in today. So giving this talk. So an overview, I'll be talking about my areas of research, my lit review. I'll be going through my study proposals, which is um, the, the two studies. I'll be talking about my timeline and progress, and I'll be answering any questions or feedback at the end as well. Okay, so areas of research, the main pro problem I'm looking at is pain. So the burden of pain, which is a huge issue worldwide. Um, so pain is a global health problem and chronic pain affects one in five adults worldwide, really. And um, in Australia, one in five people across the board are affected by chronic pain. Chronic pain, it typically lasts for pain that lasts for over three months or past their typical time of tissue healing. It has harmful effects on individuals, their family and society, has a lot of significant medical, social and economic consequences. Um, it is estimated that about 3.2 million Aussies live with chronic pain daily, costing the Australian economy about $34 billion every year. So in terms of pain, I'm looking specifically at musculoskeletal pain. So this refers to pain that commonly affects the joints, bones, muscles, spine, ligaments, tendons. So I'm talking about things like osteoarthritis, fractures, um, muscle tears, hamstring tears, back and neck pain, ankle sprains, um, so soft tissue kind of injuries. So, and low, low back pain and knee osteoarthritis are the two musculoskeletal conditions that are the highest contributors of disability around the world. If we look at some data, in 2016, the global burden of disease showed that low back pain was the number one cause of disability, with musculoskeletal problems being the main source of disability burden. Um, the global burden due to musculoskeletal pain will continue to rise with the aging population as well. And the complications of musculoskeletal trauma and pain can lead to various psychological issues so these issues may include things like stress, anxiety, and depression, or as a result of the pain from musculoskeletal regions. Now, the other area of pain I'm looking at is injury, um, and in particular, sports injury. So physical activity that aims to improve or maintain muscle strength, physical fitness, flexibility, or overall health is recommended for most musculoskeletal pain conditions across the board. In Australia, participation in sports is, is basically the most common way that individuals partake in regular physical activity. So that subsequently helps reduce the burden of pain on, on our healthcare system. However, the benefit of sports participation is adversely affected um, by the risk of musculoskeletal sports injuries. So, Prior sports injury is a very well-known contributor to joint osteoarthritis in later life. 
So often sport is a way of preventing physical pain problems from arising, but sports injury can also be a major cause of chronic pain in the future. Now looking into pain management, opioid analgesics have been the treatment of choice for a large number of chronic pain patients around the world, um, and there are rising numbers of op opioid prescriptions and usage. The pharmacological treatment of chronic pain became the standard approach to treating chronic musculoskeletal pain without much quality evidence to support its efficacy. So basically, research now shows that to maximize benefit and minimize harmful treatment, a multimodal approach to treatment is recommended. The biopsychosocial model of pain shows the importance of psychological variables in pain management, and mindfulness has an important role to play here. So looking at mindfulness now, I'll be looking into the areas of mindfulness for pain in particular and mindfulness in sport as well to tie it together. So what is mindfulness? So there, there are various defi definitions of the term mindfulness and there's a lot of debate of um, the exact definition, but the, some of the core features are it's been described as a self-regulatory state, acceptance skill, a metacognitive skill. It's originated from the Pali word sati, which means to remember. However, mindfulness is commonly translated to the presence of mind or attentiveness to the present. So reminding yourself to be fully awake or, and present in the, in the moment. John Kabat-Zinn was actually the first researcher to define mindfulness scientifically as paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. Now, when we look at mindfulness and pain, there's been a range of mindfulness interventions that have been shown to improve pain conditions. So the ones with the largest amount of quality research supporting their efficacy is the mindfulness-based stress reduction approach by John Kabat-Zinn initially and um, the acceptance and commitment therapy. So the mindfulness-based stress reduction was initially intended by John Kabat-Zinn to assist the Western world in the management of stress, pain, and illness. And acceptance and commitment therapy incorporates mindfulness techniques with personal values, behavior change strategies, behavioral commitment, and that's all to help patients live a fulfilling life. Um, when we assess reviews of mindfulness meditation on chronic pain, however, over the last decade, Generally, small to medium effects have been shown on pain-related outcomes, and more moderate effects that have basic, basically been shown on outcomes such as depression, anxiety, and quality of life. Um, if we look at online mindfulness interventions and pain, um, a review on online mindfulness interventions for people with physical conditions, so things such as chronic pain, cancer, heart disease, they found that the majority of studies showed improvements in outcomes. So in outcomes such as fatigue, pain acceptance, anxiety, depression, when they compared with um, standard care, control care with um, the online interventions. So online studies have generally shown improvements in areas such as pain acceptance and pain catastrophizing. When we look at integrating pain and mindfulness theories, the first theoretical framework for mindfulness-based pain management was studied by Day et al. in 2014, and they listed six factors involved in uh, mindfulness-based pain management. So these are brain states. So that's where the changes in brain states, brain states have been well-researched in meditation practitioners um, in relation to the areas of pain in the brain as well. Cognitive contents, beliefs about pain, um, cognitive coping processes, so things like pain acceptance and reduced pain catastrophizing because of mindfulness, environmental factors, so mechanisms of social support, social context factors, economic, educational, cultural factors, behavioral factors, so mindfulness me meditation can increase approach-oriented coping and improve task persistence. Um, emotions, so research have shown correlations between pain outcomes and negative emotional states, so things like anger, fear, anxiety, depression. If we look at the main mediating factors that explain how mindfulness affects pain, it's in the form of pain acceptance, self-regulation, reducing stress is a big one, and avoidance, 
fear avoidance of pain and detachment so detachment from negative emotions negative thoughts around pain so mindfulness in sport so this is an area it has has yet to be properly studied as a valuable recovery tool in the sporting context however there is some promising research to suggest suggest its effect on recovery pain and injured athletes so they've shown improvements in pain intensity tolerance catastrophizing mental fatigue um, when looking at mindfulness in sports they however studies in mindfulness in sport have typically focused on improving performance with less emphasis on managing pain and preventing injury. However, there is promising recent evidence that mindfulness interventions can reduce the risk of injuries, and a lot of, a lot of research has been done in football and soccer. When we look at mindfulness mechanisms in sport, so this is based on psychological interventions following both physiological and psychological pathways to reduce stress response that leads to injury. So this is all based on the stress and injury model and stress in responses include things like cognitive anxiety, attentional disruption, diminished peripheral vision and general muscle tension. Um, but mindfulness can decrease stress and improve attention leading to that reduced risk of injury as well. So looking at gaps in the literature that I've identified. So Currently, there's a large gap in research in regards to the use of mindfulness to manage acute pain or acute symptoms. And research in mindfulness and pain in the last decade have really focused mainly on chronic pain. And there's very little investigation of its effect on acute and subacute pain. In the sporting context, mindfulness has mainly been used for improving performance and well being and reducing burnout. But there's a lot of potential for mindfulness interventions to impact the burden of sports injury and pain management. And that has not um, been fully investigated yet. When we look at online mindfulness interventions, they have shown promise in treating physical health and chronic pain conditions. However, its effect in managing acute musculoskeletal pain and injury has yet to be studied really. So this leads into my study proposals. I'll be going through my systematic review meta-analysis and my randomized controlled trial. So if we look into my study one, so the first aim of my study will be to review the effectiveness of mindfulness-based interventions in managing musculoskeletal pain in the general population. And the second aim will be to review its effectiveness in preventing injuries or preventing sports injuries. The research questions, I'll be looking at associations between mindfulness and pain-related outcomes, um, mindfulness and injury rates. Are mindfulness-based interventions effective at improving pain-related outcomes when we look at those musculoskeletal pain conditions? And are those interventions effective in the prevention of sports injuries? So what I'm saying here is, are um, MBIs effective at decreasing injury rates? So these are some of the databases I'll be searching, Psych Info, Medline, Sports Discuss, PubMed, um, examples of some of my key terms as well. Um, so this is broken up into three categories. Okay, so eligibility, eligibility criteria. So studies I'll be reviewing that have to be published in, um, in English um, for intervention studies. They need to be an experimental design, longitudinal or cross-sectional design. Um, however, I'll also be looking at correlational studies as long as they have correlational data between mindfulness and musculoskeletal pain or injury. They need to include a manipulation or quantitative measure of mindfulness. They need to include a musculoskeletal pain-related outcome. They need to have the mindfulness intervention needs to be used to manage pain, manage musculoskeletal pain, and or prevent a sports injury. Um, and I'm investigating pain conditions caused by injury to the body. So I'm excluding pain from conditions such as cancer, tumors, autoimmune conditions. So this is just a roadmap of the journey I'll be going on with my systematic review. I've gone through my preliminary scoping searches and started my title and abstract screening as well. <clears throat> 
So study two, I'm looking to propose an online mindfulness-based intervention primarily based on the mindfulness-based stress reduction approach, the most research approach, um, with a client-focused approach to pain management. So I'll be looking at content to do with sitting meditation, so things like body scan and breathing, mindful movement, things like stretching and yoga, dealing with stress and emotions in sport, mindfulness and pain, mindfulness and compassion, mindfulness and gratitude. So this is the, con the framework of some of the content I have based on my current lit review, but I will be using insights from study one to get the most effective components of the MBIs as well. So the main aim of the current study will be to investigate the effect of our online intervention, mindfulness intervention, in managing daily pain outcomes for elite, for the, so the group will be elite soccer players. Um, daily diary outcomes have the advantage of capturing the experience of the individual in the natural context. And the study will also be aimed at whether the online NBI can effectively reduce injury rates in elite soccer players as well. I'll be testing whether mindfulness mediates the effects of these outcomes as well. So if we look at my hypotheses that I'll be testing, so I'll be predicting that participants in the online intervention will have higher levels of self-reported mindfulness compared to the control group at the end of the intervention. Um, the intervention group will have greater improvement in daily pain-related outcomes and mindfulness outcomes compared to the control. Um, it will be effective at reducing injury rates in elite soccer plays um, and the effectiveness of, of the intervention on pain related outcomes will be mediated by mindfulness outcomes. So things like the daily levels of mindfulness will be associated with lag daily levels of pain related outcomes as well. Okay, so participants, so I'll be recruiting these participants from a convenience sample through Manly United the Football Club. Um, so this is based on the support I have the, with the head of player welfare there. Um, so the population will be a group of elite soccer players from the club. I'll be using both female and male soccer players. Um, as a lot of the studies in the past have generally used male um, players. I'll be looking at players aged 16 years and above generally. The aim will be to recruit approximately 40 to 50 participants. So that's based on the power anal analysis, which I did, um, a simple one on G-Power. Previous studies, with, that was looking at previous studies, looking at the effect of MBSR on pain outcomes in athletes in general. So this is some of my eligibility criteria. So players must be at least 16, players must have trained regularly with the team. Um, they must be un able to understand and write in English. They must be beginners to mindfulness meditation. So basically, they must not have any formal practice of meditation. And um, players must not have any prior diagnosis of mental health conditions as well. Okay. So the study will be conducted as a randomized control trial with a waitlist control group and an intervention group. So. This, it will run as an eight-week online mindfulness intervention. So the time frame is based on popular mindfulness interventions such as the MBSR. Um, and once the final sample is confirmed, participants will be matched in pairs. So that will be based on gender, age, and previous history of injuries. So that's to minimize the risk of bias between the intervention and the control groups. I'll be matching on the number of previous injuries that's kind of due to the fact that a history of injuries is often a strong indicator of further injury as well, which will affect um, the bias of the um, results. So looking at measures. So daily pain outcome measures I'll be using is the visual analog scale. So traditionally, this is a paper-based measure. So where you draw a 10 centimeter line with indicators of no pain on the left, and the most possible pain, the most pain possible on the right side. And the, this choice is kind of, it's based on being the most reliable and valid measure of pain intensity. And it's a short measure perfect for daily use in my case. Um, I'll also be testing the five facet mindfulness questionnaire. 
the mindfulness attention awareness scale. In terms of that one, I'll be using the mindfulness attention awareness, the, the state mindfulness attention awareness scale. So that's only a five item scale to be used daily because it's quick to fill out and it is reliable and valid tool for measuring this present state of mindfulness. And I'll also be using the non-attachment scale prior to and post um, intervention and that's created by my supervisors. So looking at secondary um, measures, I'll be using the DASO, the depression, anxiety and stress scale, but I'll be only testing with the stress and anxiety subscales to be used. Um, injury recording will be done throughout from the start of the intervention to the end of the season and in injuries will be defined as any musculoskeletal complaint that has occurred during training or competition directly related to soccer that results in restricted or no training. So basically I'm um, monitoring the time lost due to injury and restricted practice. So looking at my timeline, so I've done my lit review, design of studies. I pre-registered my study one and begun the screening process. I uh, aim to pre-register my study two after um, my CSC as well and go through the ethics process. Next year, I'll be doing my study one data analysis write up, um, study two data collection and study two data analysis towards the end of the year, hopefully. And doing my full write up final year review at the end and hopefully finish at the beginning of 2024. That's about all. Thanks for listening. Um, I'll open it up to questions and feedback now.